Welcome to Salsa Talk edition number three, talking about dancing and teaching during and after COVID-19. Now, welcome to Salsa Talk. My name is Mori Crispin from the dance company Salsa Ventura here in Holland. And this is the third part of the series of three. Be sure that you also check out number one and two, and because there we talk about survey and we also talk about the different kind of scenarios. Now, today I want to talk to you about options and solutions. So how are we going to get out of this situation and how are we going to deal with it? Now, I do know that a lot of um, stuff that we might encounter is very personal, okay? It's very personal if you want to get vaccinated in case vaccines are coming or not. Um, it's very personal if you think that, um, yeah, the government should be able to not allow you to dance, even if you want to dance. So that's very personal. So without getting too personal, I want to get into the options, what you can do. Now, this video is made for dancers, but also for dance companies. So if you are connected to a dance company, please send them the link because they might appreciate that I am sharing this. Now, to make things clear, I'm not the only one who came up with those kind of solutions, okay? Here in Holland, we talk a lot with other kind of dance companies, with our colleagues. Uh, I am the owner of a Salsa Ventura franchise company, so we have a total of like 15 locations throughout the country, which are owned by about six franchise partners. And together with them and other colleagues, we came to some possible options, okay? So just to let you know. Now, let's go straight into it. Um, the first one that what you might be able to do, but it all also depends on the country where you live in and the policies that they are using, is teaching private classes. Here in Holland, we are not allowed to gather with a group with more than three people if they're not living on the same address. So that means that until a group of three, that's okay, you can get together, but you need to keep a distance of one and a half meters. Now, of course, if you live together in the same house and you're together with a partner, you might take this as an option. You can teach private classes or you can take private classes. But that means for you as a dance company or a dance teacher that private classes would in many cases be possible. For myself, when I have a, a class and I'm teaching a private, then I do not have to touch those people. Of course, I would like to because sometimes you like to physically connect with people or at least make some corrections, but you don't have to. So that means that even though you might not be able to touch or to correct with whatever you see on close distance, that might help. Now, this is a great source of income during this crisis. I know some personal trainers, they are doing still a lot of personal training just to be able to cover the cost. Okay, so private classes is option number one. Option number two, is of course offline and online. So for the same private class, you can choose both. You can choose online and offline. The first option that I was talking to you about is offline, so life, getting together. But if that's not possible, you can also do it online. Okay, so that's that might be a good option for you. Then small group classes, that might be possible. What you can do, you can put small groups together, let's say of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, as long as you keep some distance and people live on the same address, this might be a good option. Depending on your country, you might even be able to do this, totally legal. And if you wanna um, take into account the, the, the risk of spreading, you might also wear some mouth caps, but most people don't like that because it gets pretty quickly quite humid, especially when you dance, but small group classes might be an option. Whatever happens, if we get into the second stage, where things start to reopen a little bit, then it might happen that it will say, okay, for about this kind of square meters, you might be able to allow a certain kind of amount of people in. So that would also mean small group classes. What we are considering here in Holland is what we might be able to do is, for example, some people stay home. So let's say you split up a group in two, three or four groups. And every week you get a certain amount of students in, you teach them and you put a camera filming everything uh, and streaming it live to those people that are at home. And like this, you still might be able to make some connections. What you can also then do is the group that just went in week number one, they stay home in week number two and you invite the other group. Now, depending on the size of group, you might be able to rotate and to, to change those groups in that sense and still stay connected with all the students. Then, in case that you might consider small group classes, please, 
take this in account that you do not change partners because whenever you change partners, you might be able to uh, spread the risk of, um, of spreading the virus, okay? In case somebody is carrying it around and it's not very smart to, uh, to change partners. So this is one of the options that you might uh, want to use. And then what you can also do is find a partner online because if you find a partner online that is also kind of in quarantine, that is not seeing anyone, and you get together and you trust each other, and maybe you know each other from before, then it might be an option to find a partner online and follow the small group class. Then, of course, we have online dance classes, and this is quite interesting because you see this a lot, and we are also doing it just, you know, totally for free. We offer something on, on Facebook live, and we say, okay, you know, let's go live. We teach a class, and people are able to join the class or not, okay, depending on what they want. But you also see very professional online dance classes. I mean, our platform, SalsaVentura.tv, is being used a lot over the last month, much more than before. Now, why? Because people still want to get the information and practice. So if you want to do online classes, there are basically two options. You can do it for free or you can do it with a payment. Then for the paid option, you also have two options. You can work with different kinds of platforms and make them pay or do something what we do with SalsaVentura.tv. People pay for a, a lifetime deal, for example, or a one-year membership or even one specific level with about 20 videos and they practice that. Okay, so that's another option. So you might be able to use webinars. You might be able to use Zoom. Now, I do know that a lot of people start doubting zoom because they, they had some safety issues on the other hand you know they now have this waiting room they also have a password i never had any, any troubles with zoom and what you might be able to do but i'm going to put up uh, very soon uh, a webinar where i'm going to share much more detailed information if you're interested and what you might be able to do is reducing zoom is what what you can do is for example put a paid option there and then send people a link to the to the Zoom. The good thing about Zoom is that you can give people good instructions like, okay, you, your camera needs to be on so we can see you, be sure you don't have too much backlight, stuff like that, and be sure that uh, people can ask questions, okay? And then using social media, of course, you can even do it with Facebook. Now, within the webinar that I'm going to give very soon, I'm going to share all the options, a different kind of option that might help you to actually make some money during these periods, okay? Then, when you talk about online dance classes, there is a very big difference between two groups. You have monthly membership and you have a course system. Now, those that are using a monthly membership were quite lucky because those students that were coming in the live classes actually kept paying every month. And since they don't want that dance company to go broke, they kept paying the money. And since it many times works with automatic uh, payments, People just let it go, okay? But now, since the crisis is going to take a bit longer, I have heard that quite some students have asked to those companies, we don't have that system. We, what we do is we, uh, we make people pay per course. I'm going to go into that in a second. But if you have a monthly membership, what people can then do is say, okay, you know what? Please stop the, the, the withdrawals and we're just going to freeze the payments. That's an option. But the lucky thing is what a lot of companies were doing is that the live classes that they were teaching, they were now doing it online. And of course, there are some challenges with sound, etc. But at least they are surviving. And with monthly membership, a lot of students will be willing to continue paying if they see that you're putting the effort in it. Now, talking about the course system, what we have is we sell courses of 10 weeks. Now, we just finished week number seven, so our students still have three classes to go. Now, what we decided to do at Salsa Ventura is to say, okay, depending on how long this is going to take, the people will still have those three classes. What is a very good thing is that whenever the classes will start, the first thing that we're going to do is pick up the last three classes, so that's a very good reason for people to come back and to join and to um, to get connected again, okay? But again, we don't know how long it will take. So what we also do, we offer online classes, but those are all, in this case, until now, pre-recorded. We might go into something which we call monthly memberships or anything, but we don't know. But I do know that dance companies are doing it, and for them, it works quite well. What you can also do is free content. I'm going to talk to you a lot about the webinars because we make quite a lot of income with the online classes, but it's only because we offer something for free as well. If you don't have any free classes, 
then a lot of people will have the doubts if they should buy it or not. But if you are sure that your free content has value and people can see that, wow, this is quite a nice way of following a class, then you might be able to do like an upsell. Okay, so that is also something interesting. Talking about the free content, you can do free online dance classes, like I just said, maybe using Facebook or anything. You can do actually Salsa Bachata Kizomba. You can do some blogging, okay, so you can just write and you can do some vlogging and talk about it. And, and actually this, what I am doing now, is actually a form of vlogging, but then talking about those options, trying to help dance companies out and trying to help you dancers also to see what kind of situation we are in. Then guys, these are the last tips for today. First of all, what you can do, you can work with donations, okay? There are a lot of people out there that are very busy, that have booming businesses at the moment. One of my own personal businesses next to the dancing is in vitamins. And, uh, and what actually happens is that there, the business still goes on actually because a lot of people want to take vitamins now, that business actually has a growth. Now, the interesting thing is if you talk about people with supermarkets or into the business of toilet paper, for example, those people make money. So do not start filling in, please, that donations is something that you should feel pity for because that's a, what a lot of people have like, yeah, I don't want to ask. But there are a lot of people that are more than willing to help you out with those donations. And one of the things that you can do, for example, is um, tell people very honestly, guys, you know, we have this location. We are teaching there. This is our location. If you want us to be able to continue with those classes, then please do a donation. And whatever you want to give, it's welcome. So what we did actually on our website, we made something that we call donations between 10, I think it starts with 10 and then 20, 30, 50. They can give up to 100 euro. And actually some people gave some donations. Okay, so that might be an idea. Then you have also pay in advance. This is not another option. What you can do in your classes is that you go like, okay, guys, we cannot teach now, but we're going to teach, for example, the next season. And if you want, you can start to pay ahead. But there was one little tricky thing about that. When you do that, you have to take one thing in option. If you start taking that money and you start using it now for whatever you need it for, please remember that those people have paid. So actually what you're doing is you're taking a loan. Okay, You're borrowing the money for your survival but one thing is that whenever you start in a few months with your classes then that money won't come in again because you already used it so now you have a debt okay so now you actually have to pay those people back by teaching your classes and then the question comes how long can you do that so this is something that i do advise because the good thing is if people pay in advance they are willing to come to your class it's like of giving a certain commitment but please make the reservations with that money for whenever you can start your class instead of using it and having to ask for more and more payment in advance. Then we have crowdfunding. Now you have those beautiful platforms like for example Indiegogo and what you might be able to do is send all your students an email out and go like guys you know we need some money because we are going to lose our location for example or you know we want to invest in some online tools we want to buy a camera we want to buy a laptop and stuff like that we need some crowdfunding and then you can put an amount of like a goal five thousand ten thousand whatever you want okay so crowdfunding might be a very good option for you and then what you might be able to do is start a complete new business do not forget guys we are all entrepreneurs and i know that in the dancing scene there are very few people making a lot of money with dancing but there are okay there are quite good business people and also you are a business person and now, depending on your qualities and depending on your background and your experience and maybe the amount of years that you've been doing it, it might be very interesting to start looking around and ask yourself, what else can I do? In my own example, about two years ago, I got kind of a bit tired of running the dance company the way I was doing it. So what I did, I transferred it into a franchise company. Now, happy I did that because at this moment... That gave me the option two years ago to start another business, and that is when I started the vitamin business. Now, this is within a network marketing company, and I know that a lot of people are like, no, no network marketing company, but if you know what you're doing, and if you have a good coach, and if you have a very good program, then you will see that this might be the model for the for this century, okay? So if you're interested, just send me an email, guys. I'm more than happy to share the opportunity with you. We're open in Europe, in the United States, and we're now opening Dubai to actually start opening Asia. So within a little while, we're going to be all over the place with natural vitamins. So that might be interesting. But this is just my own example. You can also think about any other kind of business. What else 
can you do? What kind of demands are there in the market and what else might you be able to do with the capacity and the quality that you have now? So please also think a little bit wider than just waiting for the dance companies to open because it might take quite a long time. Now guys, listen to this. We have this survey, okay? We are, at the moment that I'm filming this, the survey is almost ready. So please guys, fill in the form. The link is below. You can fill in the form and I will send you the entire survey. And it's very, very interesting, okay, what you're gonna see there. Then I'm gonna organize a webinar. Somewhere around next week, I'm gonna organize a webinar and I'm gonna let you know by making a new video on YouTube, but also please subscribe to our newsletter. Now, if you download the survey, you're going to be automatically be put on the newsletter. So when you download the survey, you're going to get automatic email for whenever we do the webinar. And this is where I'm going to share a lot, especially for dancers and dance companies, where, you, where I'm going to give you much more tips than what I gave you until now. And more than happy to share it with you guys. So I hope to see you back in the webinar. And then we'll also have some dance classes coming up. So stay tuned. Wish you all the best. Stay healthy and see you next time.